everyone and welcome to the latest in our short talks series today i'm here chatting to kate strong an ethical entrepreneur and global adventurer and kate is um quite a remarkable person in terms of there's several feats she's looking to undertake over the next couple of years um she's next triathlete world age group champion has achieved a fantastic amount runs a, a consulting business as well and recently completed a uh, quite an impressive summit of speakers that I'll get us to talk to us about briefly later on. But at the moment, Kate, um, can you just give us a quick summary on your background, please? Sure. So I come from a, a country called Wales, for anyone who doesn't know. It's quite a traditional family. I, I, I was born with, a, uh, with parents and my younger brother, and I didn't really have anything to sort of fight against. It was quite a, a normal family with great privileges. Uh, yet I always had a burning desire in myself to understand why things were the way they were and also see how the rest of the world lived. So when I was 18, I went to university to study mechanical engineering and took the opportunity to do gap years in different countries such as Italy and Spain, as well as uh, working on summer holidays in Mexico as well and Russia. And after graduating with a double master's, I started traveling the world to really explore the different areas of cultures in developing countries and countries which languages I didn't speak as well. And I eventually settled in Australia, owned and operated my own hospitality businesses for about nine years. And during that time, I took up triathlon to give myself a goal within that time of always contributing to my partner and work where, as you rightly said earlier, I became number one for my age group in the world. And that's when I realized I had a platform. I had a space to be able to answer those questions of how, how can we strive for more? How can we remove the glass ceiling off our potential? So I sold my guest house and moved back to Britain and currently um, serving others and finding out how they can take their life and their business to the next level as well. Great, thanks Kate. So tell me a little bit about what motivates you. I think what motivates me is is exactly what I just said. It's about finding out where I've capped my own possibility and my potential and find out how I can take it that step further. And some of it is also what I've taken for granted and whether that's serving me or not. So what really motivates me is making sure that I'm living life to the maximum, but I'm also living life fairly. So I believe that every being can thrive. So my joy shouldn't be the discomfort or uh, you know dissatisfaction of other people and other beings as well. So I'm making sure that I'm always addressing how I can live more, get more from my own life, but also give more back to the communities and the causes that are nearest to my heart. And that's probably a good, good point then to talk about, I mean, in living to the max, and this is what was impressive in first talking to you in that um, you mentioned you're going for a Guinness World Record at the end of this year, if you just quickly give us an overview on that. Yes, I've attempted it a few, uh, a few years ago and failed. And it's a static bicycle challenge. So it's the furthest distance covered within 24 hours without moving. So, yeah, I want to aim towards 800 kilometers. Wow, that is impressive. And then uh, coming up in the future, we've got Race Across America, toughest cycle ride in the world, harder and further than the Tour de France from what I've seen on the stats. And you're aiming to be the first female finisher on that as the target. Yep, and it comes back to what we were saying earlier that I don't know my own potential, so I mm. need to own to, to be number one to find out what my best is as well. And that's over 3,000 miles on the bike, minimal rest, about two yeah. hours sleep when you can get it here and there, and then back from that and then channel swim. Yep, within two months I'll be uh, practicing swimming in the ocean and cover that 21 miles from England to France. And then after that, just up Everest. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, exactly right. So, so I'll be slow traveling to Nepal using base camp there. For, well, the base of Nepal is uh, camp for four months and practicing again, getting used to altitude and then attempting to the Everest. There was um, an interesting point you made when we spoke originally about, I guess, having short term goals um, pretty much decimated by the current pandemic and you'd reframed and focused on bigger, longer term goals. And that's what I found quite impressive when we first spoke with biggest, hardest bike race in the world, then go back from the channel and then climb Everest. <laughs> it's fantastic in terms of, and, and it, I guess you're going through a huge amount of detail on planning and prep on those now, aren't you? 
Yeah, definitely. We've uh, recruited a, an operations manager pretty much to go through every single detail. It'll take about two years to plan the whole thing, which is quite fortuitous because mm, I'm not yeah. doing it until two years' time. Oh, great. Uh, and a question about who your role models are, please. Who would you say are your role models? Yeah, you, you've asked me this question before, and I, I always struggle to have an answer for this because I don't really look up to anybody. I don't idolize any person individually. Yet what I, I endeavor to do is every connection I make to find some element or attribute within that individual to aspire in my own life. So that may be from the, the clerk in the, in the shop who serves me to my mother, to somebody I pass in the street, or even that you know astronaut I was speaking to just last week. Everyone's got a bit of gold that I can take and a mirror in my own life to take myself that bit further and closer towards my own personal goals. Okay. And, and I think that's what um, was impressive when you did your summit last week. There were how many speakers overall did you get together? Um, I had 15 slots. 15. One slot did have four people. Wow. And you'd organized that, not having done a similar thing before, got all those world class speakers together. I know I watched, I managed to watch about half of it through the day. You had astronauts, you had all sorts on. It was really impressive. So and that was very good. And um, could you give us a little bit more information on just, I guess, on the setting that up and what you learned from that process? I was having these great conversations, similar to what you're doing here with me, with, with high achieving individuals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not just talking about the, the physical high achievers. I'm talking about operationally and also leadership management as well. Because for me to swim, cycle and hike the, the elements I'm attempting doesn't just mean need physical force. I need mm. to make sure my mental resilience is up, that my spiritual development is also expanded, that I can sustain and maintain that level of fitness for a long period of time. So with all these conversations, I, I thought I was being quite selfish and keeping them behind closed doors with just me on the phone. Mm. So I started to invite them if it was okay if we could video it and even better host it live so people could engage with these individuals where normally we wouldn't be able to speak to a NASA uh, astronaut or someone who cycled around the world in 79 days or that you know I got the first female sorry black African female who summited Everest on the show as well to talk about inequalities or this elitism with uh, gender as well as our race and our background these conversations wouldn't normally be open to the public on that level. So I really wanted to just bring it to as many people as possible to, to get them excited about what they could submit or climb or do within their own lives as well. And it was a fantastic event. And I think I'm glad I, I chose to, to speak with you now because the whole, I guess, premise for me wanting to talk to you was an insight into a high-performing mindset. And I think I initially spoke to you just as we were a couple of days in the run-in to the... Um, the event and then having now seen that go through and seen that I guess the caliber of the people you're feeding from and learning from and getting to support you with your events and plans is fantastic so I guess my final question on developing and I guess maintaining a high performance mindset is do you have three tips for us please on that yeah and you I think you're right. And our conversation last week was 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 amazing, but this week is a different level because I've had such great exposure to some amazing individuals in their own right as well. So two of the three points I said last week are still very valid, but the third I've also had a I'm gonna twist it a little bit. The first thing I saw in myself whenever I achieved, but also what was lacking when I wasn't, when I was in a in a little funk in my life, was gratitude. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I also saw this reflected in every single person I spoke with, being grateful for what we have, being grateful for the opportunities, for as simple things as a roof over our head. That attitude of gratitude really, really shone through in those high achievers. The second thing is acknowledgement. Uh, a lot of us look outside of ourselves, like grateful is for things outside of us. Acknowledgement is time to look in us and actually pat ourselves on the back as well. So even, again, it could be as small as we got out of bed today or as large as I've just summited Everest and achieved mm -hmm. the wildest dreams. So everyone acknowledge what they did without ego. It was, I've done this. This is who I am. No, no excuses, no, no hiding away as well. So it was beautiful to see people being proud in that purest sense. Yeah. And the third thing I was going to say, add an element of curiosity, because I love bringing childish mm. thought processes and not taking for granted towards, but I think I'm going to change it. It was that can-do attitude. Mm -hmm. Problem is only a problem 
if we call it so. Every single person I spoke to had a reason to stop, to give up, to call what their stopping was a failure and really blame it or justifiably stop as well. One guy lost his eyesight and was kicked off the football team before the Olympics. Did he stop? No, he found another way to compete in judo in the Olympics. His can-do attitude shone through, so he competed in the Olympics. And so it's about finding what else could I be doing? If this path is burnt, what other path could I be walking on to still get where I want to go? So that those are my three top tips. Yeah, it's a fantastic story in the last one because that that would have that would have broken most people, I think, going through that. But to just say, right, I'm going to change course. I'm going over here now, and I'm doing it at a world class level. It's fantastic. And I like your attitude of gratitude. That's quite cool. I might borrow that. Um, <laughs> no, fantastic, Kate. You're really good, and it's it's been a pleasure to get to know you over the last week or two. And um, really inspirational to um, chat to you. Thank you very much for those points. Best of luck with the world record and the race across America and the Channel Swim and the Everest Climb. I shall be following them all closely. Thank you. And if I do all three, I'll be the first ever female in the world to do that. So that's quite, quite an accomplishment and something to drive me as well. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Um, best of luck with that. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Thank you.